In this video, I'm going to talk about some useful logical equivalences involving the connective implies. The first of these allows us to express implications in terms of the connectives or and not. So what this theorem says is, if you have two well-formed formulas, phi and psi, then phi implies psi is logically equivalent to psi or not phi. As usual, we're going to do the proof of this logical equivalence by drawing up a truth table. So under any truth assignment, either phi is true or false, and either psi is true or false. So in order to check that the two well-formed formulas have the same truth value under every truth assignment, we're simply going to check the four possibilities of combinations of truth values for phi and psi. So I've written those in the table at the bottom here. So as usual, we'll just work out some of the truth values in this table. So um, the next empty column is simply the truth table for implies, which I'm sure you remember it is true in all cases, except when the thing on the left was true and the thing on the right was false. So this is the only case where it was false. So the interesting part is working out the truth values for psi or not phi. So let's have a go at some of those. And we'll begin with the first row. So this is talking about truth assignments which make psi and phi both true. So the truth value here is true or not true, which is true or false. And of course, by the truth table for or, that is true. So I put a true here. Uh, next, let's do this one. So we're going to work out the truth value when phi is true and psi is false. So I have here false or not true. So that is false or false, which is false. So I get a false here on the line below. I have that phi is false and psi is true. So I have true or not false, which is true or true. So that's true. And finally, for the last line here, um, I'm in the situation where they're both false. So what we have is false or not false which is false or true, which is true. So I've got a true here as well. So if we just look at those last two columns, those two columns are the same. So the two well-formed formulas have the same truth value under every truth assignment. And that means by definition, they are logically equivalent. So let's think what this result is actually telling us now that we've proved it. It's telling us something uh, interesting, something useful, because it means that the connective implies is actually not really necessary in the sense that given any well-formed formula using our four connectives, we can find a logically equivalent well-formed formula that doesn't use implies. In other words, that only uses and, or, and not. Because given any such well-formed formula, given any well-formed formula that potentially does use implies, you could go and look at this logical equivalence here, and you could use that to replace the implies connective with a logically equivalent formula that just uses or and not. We're going to return to this idea when we discuss adequacy in uh, the next video, I think. But um, for the meantime, this justifies what I was saying right at the start when I said we don't actually need all four of these connectives. And the sense in which we don't need them is precisely that, given any well-formed formula using the four connectives, you can actually replace it with a logically equivalent one that only uses not an and an or. So moving on to a really useful logical equivalence called the contrapositive, I want to prove the following logical equivalence, which says that if you have two well-formed formulas, phi and psi, then 
phi implies psi is logically equivalent to not psi implies not phi. So you swap the order of the two formulas and you put nots in front of them. And this thing on the right is called the contrapositive of the thing on the left. So let's write that down. So this, this formula here is called the contrapositive. So it's the contrapositive of this thing, right? And because the contrapositive of an implied statement is logically equivalent to the original statement, uh, instead of proving one of these, you can prove the other. And sometimes that can be easier. I'll give you an example in a moment. But for now, let's do the proof. So we could prove this in the normal way, which is by writing out a truth table, which gives all the possible combinations of truth values that phi and psi might have, and showing that those two things have the same truth value in each, each combination of truth values for phi and psi. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to use a chain of logical equivalences to prove this, because it's good practice in doing algebraic manipulations with logical equivalences. So let's remind ourselves what happened on the previous slide. On the previous slide, we proved a logical equivalence for, um, for implies. So let's just say recall. What did we prove? I'm going to write it with slightly different notation. We proved that alpha implies beta is logically equivalent to beta or not alpha. So forgive me missing out the brackets here. But that's the result that we proved on the previous slide, and we're going to use this to help us prove the contrapositive logical equivalence. So where are we going to start? Um, well, we'll start with the left-hand side, so phi implies psi. And as I've just said from the previous slide, that is logically equivalent to psi or not phi. Okay. So what I'm now going to do is I'd like to have this in a form where I can turn it into the thing on the right hand side. So I'm aiming to get this to turn this into the contrapositive not psi implies not phi. And the only way I have to do it is by using the result of the previous slide. So it seems that what I need is I need some knots in front of the psi here, and I need the psi to be on the right of this or. So that's no problem because we know that um, we know that or is commutative. So this logical equivalence is by commutativity of or. And we also have the double negation. So the way I'm going to get some not knots in front of my psi is by just using double negation. Psi is logically equivalent to not not psi. Okay, now let's think carefully about the result which I highlighted over here about logical equivalences for implies. So if I now take alpha to be not psi here, and I take beta to be not phi. Let's try and write this a bit more clearly. So in this logical equivalence here, remember that's valid for any well-formed formulas, alpha and beta, so in particular it's valid for the well-formed formulas not phi and not psi. And you can see that what you get here is that this is logically equivalent to not psi implies not phi. And that's what we claimed was true, so we are done. All right, so I said that this was useful. I said that having the contrapositive logical equivalence was a useful thing in actual proofs, because instead of proving that A implies B, you can instead prove not B implies not A, and sometimes that's easier. So what would be an example when that was easier? Well, let's look at an example where proving the contrapositive might be easier. So I'm thinking about the statement x squared, x is a, a number here, a real number is irrational. 
implies x is irrational. Now that's actually as written written like that. It's a quite a tricky thing to prove because you want to show that if x squared is irrational, then x is irrational. But irrational numbers don't have like one specific form. Like irrational numbers can be all sorts of um, strange things. So written like this, it seems quite difficult to prove because you can't get a handle on um, on proving it just by thinking of what does an irrational number look like. Um, so you you're a bit stuck when you try to prove this. But the contrapositive of this. would actually be something that really gave you something to work with. So the contrapositive would be x is rational. Remember, that means x is a fraction with integer numerator and denominator, like 1 over 5 or minus 7 over a million. So x is rational implies x squared is rational. And that is much easier to prove because what you have to do is assume x is rational and then prove x squared is rational. And when you assume x is rational, that's much easier because it actually gives you some information. It tells you x can be written as an integer divided by an integer. And you can use that very easily to show that x squared is also an integer divided by an integer. So that's an example in which the contrapositive logical equivalence actually helps you to do proofs. It enables you to prove a logically equivalent statement, which might actually be easier to prove. And my last comment here is don't confuse the contrapositive with the converse. So the converse of uh, phi implies psi is psi implies phi. And these things are not logically equivalent.